Now, I've had this overlocker for not quite a month now, and it's acting up. And when I say that, um, everything is on factory setting, so as it came out of the box. But on a sheet of cotton, I'm noticing I'm getting irregular stitches. And the needles are good, I do replace them regularly. So why is it acting up? Well, there's a lot of reasons. And the first reason is I've allowed the machine to build up a collection of fluff inside there. That's no good for the machine. It dries up all of the moving parts. You'll uh, find that you'll hear a thudding noise as the needles are uh, trying to force their way through fabric. So what we need to do is clean this machine. And the first thing I need to do, switch it off and unplug. Always do that. It's not worth the trouble you'll get yourself into if you don't. The next thing I want to do is I'm going to lift the presser foot. Don't be too scared, but I am going to snip these threads away and take the threads out. So snip them up there and pull it through the system like this. Don't cut them any other way. Don't cut them um, down here and feed them back through. That's not good for the machine either. I'm going to remove the presser foot. So press the button at the back here. That releases the presser foot and I'm going to pull the threads out. There we go. So get rid of those threads. And now you can see what's left and there's a lot of rubbish. So I'm going to bring you in closer so you can see some more. And they really do help. So picking out all the big bits of material, and I've got something orange here. I'm trying to remember what I'm, oh, Halloween things. <laughs> so I've been making Halloween things. Um, and I'm going to use a brush. I might have a paintbrush lying around. And they've got long bristles, so they're really good as well. Um, and you can re can you see, get really far into the machine and the bits there. And these have nylon bristles, look at that dust. And because it's nylon, it attracts the dust to it through static. Do you use air sprays? Do you use vacuum cleaners? No, not really, not if you're not sure what you're doing don't 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 do things like that it's not necessary but definitely give your machine a good clean now look through the manual if you look through your manual you can check out page 23 of your manual and it will tell you where to oil because we do need to oil the machine what happens with all this fiber build up is it gets caught in all the moving parts. So I'll show you now. So we've got moving part there. Can you see that going up and down? So that's a moving part. We've got a moving part here. And you can see there, fibers are building up between the pieces there. What happens is those fibers absorb the oil. They soak up the oil, taking it away from the machinery. The machinery needs that oil to move and to work efficiently. So you need to just check, move it along, get your hands in there, make it a regular habit. So once you've done all that, I'm going to close the door for a moment. I've got a nice cotton cloth. Cotton doesn't attract static, so I can wipe it down with that. Just check inside there, pull that free arm. Flip the machine round. I'm going to take these threads off because we don't need them. And I'm going to wipe this down. Okay, so all of that's done. Machine is dusted and, oops, and dust free. I'm going to lower the uh, presser foot and what happens is the tension discs close. When they're closed, I can get my clean cotton fabric and give the machine a wipe and any buildup of threads. So let's have a nice clean piece there. Any buildup of fibers and threads caught in there. There's not much, but there are a couple of bits and bobs coming up. Um, will be wiped out. 
and I can feel the discs. So listen out for the click. So when I go in and then come back out, you should hear a click. Okay, I know I've cleaned in between tension discs. So just spent a few minutes fighting with this, but I've managed to loosen it off. So let's remove that. This is really just for maintenance. So I've removed that. And actually there is a buildup of dust there, which I'll get rid of. There we go. So we'll place that back. Press the foot on, give the press foot a good wipe, and then use the extra lift and then pop that back. Now I'm going to change the needles, so I'll use the Allen key. Now my Allen key looks a little bit different. If you've lost yours, you can replace it, but I find this so much easier to use than the one that's provided with the machines. Then replace the needles with some good needles. So use a standard size 80. 80 is a good size to use in your overlocker. Push them up as high as they'll go. It's very tricky to do. Look at page 23. It tells you to oil every 24 hours of use what does that mean i don't know i know it's acting up i know the needles sound thuddy so i've replaced them i know my stitches aren't as efficient so i've cleaned everything but i'm going to put a drop of oil in as well because i know i've made jackets and dresses and bags and zip bags and all sorts of things halloween costumes so I've done a lot of sewing in the last three weeks I've had this machine. Not sure if it total amounts to 24 hours, but I know it just needs a, a drop of oil here and there because it's not sounding as good as it did when it came out of the box and it's not working as well as it did when it came out of the box. So the two machine oils that I would recommend is the machine oil that comes with your sewing machine. If you don't have that, Pop to the hardware shop and pick up one of these 3-in-1 oils. It's made by WD-40. There's the brand. Um, I think it was made by somebody else a long, long time ago. It's something my mum always used. So it's been going for ever and ever. Um, and on the back, look for the sewing machine. They call it leisure use, <laughs> which is funny. And they also have scissors on there. So you could probably pop a drop on your scissors as well if you of course don't use your fabric scissors for this guys that tiny little bit there at the top should give me a drop of oil let's see if it drops oil there we go so I've got a nice drop of oil from that little bit at the top then we're going to just add a drop on all the moving parts so look for all the moving parts in the, in the manual, it tells you to pop a drop there and a drop there. So I'm going to just pop a drop in there and one there. But because I am who I am, I like to add extra bits. So I'm going to pop a drop in there. And that just helps make sure the knife is moving nicely up and down and then work it through so just back and forward with the hand wheel just let it get in there get really in there soaking through so now the machine is all nicely set up set up clean and the threads are in i'm going to put the plug back in and switch the machine on I'm going to come back to this piece of fabric and remove the needles, get rid of those, and let's give this a shot. Now hopefully, I'm not going to see any of this anymore or any of this twisting, um, and everything should work lovely and smoothly. <laughs>
And there we go, much better, isn't it? And you can also check when you sew two seams. So I'm going to grab some stretch fabric. Ideally what I should get is a seam that doesn't show me my stitches. Should adjust the knife so that it was perfect but it's come out nice anyway let's flip it through and let's look for any stitches now the stitches are not showing which means the tension is good but if I stretch on it you can see some but it's only because it's been forced and it's the fabric that's been forced so my machines all nicely set up and ready to go for a new week brilliant so to recap, make sure you spend some time regularly. It took me five minutes to do a quick check over of the machine and maybe a, a bit more um, to change needles. But what essentially you need is to make sure you first brush down the machine, find a nylon brush. I'll pop links down for everything I've used in today's video. So a nice uh, brush with long bristles made with nylon so that it can use static to force the dust out once you've cleaned them um, these are nylon brushes as well and the reason i don't really recommend them is because the bristles come out too easily and i found they trap inside the machine and that's going to cause some nuisance although if you're careful they are actually very good um, put that to the side the next thing you need to do is once you've done that, make sure you use a cotton cloth to wipe everything down. Make sure you've gathered all the dust that, that's sat there due to static built up by the nylon brush. So once you've wiped all that down, use some sewing machine oil. In your sewing machine, you may have been given some oil. This is great. It's nice and lightweight. So it's uh, specially designed for your sewing machine and your overlocker. When you run out of that, you want to find yourself some WD-43 in one. On the back, look for the sewing machine. Make sure it's the correct one. There are lots of different versions of this now. And uh, you don't want to confuse it, uh, confuse it uh, with a different one. You want to make sure it lubricates. That's the one that's very important. Prevents rust as well. So that's really important. Only use a drop at a time. Don't get too excited, but too much. But make sure you've you've cleaned it up. If you need a screwdriver to get in under the needle plate, that will be handy. Make sure um, you use your Allen key to change your needles. Look after it. Hopefully you've made that zip bag to keep everything together. I will find an Allen key with a handle. Uh, this is from an old machine that I've had before. Um, and I've kept hold of those little bits and bobs. I'll see if I can find a link for you. It's much easier to use one of these than it is the Allen key provided with the machine. Your tweezers that came with the machine is also great for grabbing all the extra long bits and bits of fabric. And then needles, make sure you get yourself some good needles. There are lots of brands out there that are no good. They break very, very easily. Um, don't buy cheap. You've got yourself a nice machine. It will give you years and years of good work if you treat it well. So buy yourself some maybe Prim, maybe Schmetz needles, size 80. Um, I have a lot here. I have 100 here because I use a lot of machines um, in my workshops. So I do need to make sure I've got a good supply. Um, but a pack of 80 needles size 80 needles will be perfect for most of your overlocker projects um and that's it take time to do it weekly and you'll have a really good machine working for you forever take care